All right, guys, welcome back to the show. So we got our friends Lindsay and Brian with us in the house, and they are both from Dallas as well, too. So, guys, how are you guys doing today? Yo, doing great. We are good, y'all. Getting <laughs> getting in the groove for today, getting in the Texas summertime, summer solstice today, guys. Mm-hmm. So longest day of the year, get sun until 9 p.m. Get to enjoy it. Exactly. And I know we were just talking before we hit record, like there's like some heat wave going on, like for the listeners don't live in Dallas, but it's bad. It's like, feels like a sauna out there and it's just, uh, yeah, we're just trying to push through it. Yeah. I think that it's not as bad once you kind of step back from hearing how bad it is. Mm -hmm. So we've lived here for four years and it's always this hot. Yeah. You know, it's, it always hits this point where it feels brutal and you just kind of have to stop complaining about it. Exactly. Oh, yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. You know, we, we grew up in New Hampshire where it gets down to like negative 14 during the winter. And so you complain about that during the winter. You complain about the heat during the summer. Is at some point it's like, hey, this oh, is. Oh, yeah. Just, <laughs> yeah. It's just, you just, you just got to adapt to it. Yeah. Totally. It's just putting me through hormesis, right? It's testing the cell. So <laughs> I, I can, I can handle it a little bit better. Than <laughs> I'm with you, man. Well, cool guys. I appreciate you guys uh, coming on, you know, and uh, you know, we, we have like a whole track history. We met out in uh, Los Angeles, you know, before pre COVID and you guys are doing some great things and we've always really respected just all the stuff that you guys are doing within the health and fitness industry, how many lives you guys are transforming. Brian, you came on and did a, an amazing teaching for our accelerator program a month ago. So I am very excited to, you know, conversate with you guys, get to have the listeners get to know more about you guys and just all the cool things you guys are doing. So let's kick this off. We always like to like start off with a, a billboard question. So there's something about billboards and marketing that really captivates the eye. So let's say the mayor of Dallas was like, Lindsay, Brian, we love what you guys are doing. We're going to hook you guys up with like a couple of billboards all around. So what would those billboards say and why? Mine would say dream, right? And it might say dream big or keep dreaming. But I think that uh, idea that has me recently, maybe over the last year is just, I think that as we get older, we stop dreaming. Mm-hmm. Like we stop believing in dreams. And at any point in time, you can, decide that there's something better you can go for. And I think that that's the whole notion of a dream, right? And even the American dream, the American dream isn't just buying a house. It's that you can be better tomorrow than you are today through your own work, effort and sacrifice. Yeah. So I would say something along the lines of keep dreaming. That's what my mind would say. Love that. Oh, you got a top of that. Yeah, we got, we're bringing Arnold. We're bringing Arnold to the table today. I think it, it is one of my favorite quotes from him. But I think that's also the truth. no, it is. It is. It is very true. I one of my first employees and also first clients made me a sign once that says "No, you can," because I used to say that all the time. I was like, "If you know that you can do it, you're gonna do it." It's just so simple, but the belief is such a block for. I would say for people in general for everyone. But I know that for myself, the biggest hurdle to get over was just knowing I could do it, knowing I could build a business or knowing I could build a body or knowing I could grow whatever it might be. So I could keep it simple and lean into that old saying I used to have of just know you can. And that is like the biggest, the biggest symbol that I would want to tell people is just believe, believe that you can do it. Believe that Mm -hmm. you you'll find your way. Believe that the answers will come to you. The resources will come to you. But if you don't, if you don't believe it, if you don't know that you can do it, then you, you will, you will cut yourself off from even finding the solution that is of course out there. The solutions are endless. So I'll keep it simple with no, you can. And then maybe in small text, then you will. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. And the belief is so powerful. I think this is a really good segue guys to kind of go into like, you know, talking about the work that you guys are doing at the fitness project. Right. So I went on, just saw like your guys' mission statement that you guys have on your site. And I wish I could say that I had the skills to remember it, but I'm going to read it off here because I think it's super powerful. And I think it's going to make for a great discussion. So what it says is over the last five years, we have worked with hundreds of clients and logged over 10,000 hours of coaching uh, calls and sessions. What we've learned is that the core of each fitness journey is something deeper than a desire to lose weight and see abs. For most people, fitness is about feeling and being better physically, mentally, and emotionally. The only problem is that most people don't approach fitness with this mindset. Okay, That's super powerful. So my question is, why don't people approach fitness with this mindset? Mm -hmm. 
It's a good question. I think that if I was to simplify it down, it's because it's hard to remember that there's something bigger at play. Right. And we have like our psychology, which might be over oh, comparing ourselves to other people, or we want the instant gratification, or maybe we don't really see what the long term payoff is, or we're staying at the, the surface level of, we'll say, our understanding or meaning. And so a lot of us associate unconsciously that if I look a certain way, I will feel a certain way. Mm -hmm. But they don't go take the next step and say, but what happens if I feel that way? What, what makes it significant? Why is it important? And the, the, the challenge is that if we're only pursuing an external goal, which is a uh, way I look for uh, one moment in time, and I'm not really doing it to pursue an internal goal or a change inside of me, then the change that I'm making won't last. Or if I'm just trying to get to the scale to be a certain weight or a certain number, but I'm not really seeing it as a process of who I'm becoming. Right. And it's very empty and fulfilling, but at the first level of our, our pain, it's like, Oh, my clothes don't fit. Right. So the first point, my pain, I hit pain, which is like my clothes don't fit. I feel lethargic. I look at my body. That's the first conscious piece of pain that we see. So that's what we go and try to solve, yeah. which is a fantastic motivator, but we need to, I think have a better bridge between that point and then the extension of like, what does our quality of life look like? Right. I think that yeah. I'd, a good awareness point would be if, if you catch yourself saying, I just want X, I just want to lose 10 pounds. I just want that pair of pants to fit. I just want to hit eight figures. I just want this. Then you will get to that point, but then it's a dead end. So I think that that's that, I don't want to say desperation because it sounds very negative, but it's this feeling of desperation. This like, Oh my God, like I just need my thirst quenched. I just need to hit this target. I just need to feel a little bit better. It sets such a low bar that I think that you can't even imagine raising that bar higher and saying, I want to do this and, or so that it's usually just, I just want this. Mm hmm and it's in reality, you actually want more than that, but it's like, you can't conceive of what's beyond that. So it's just the, clo again, like Brian said, like it's the closest conscious point of like, that's the first, that's success, but it, we see it as success rather than the first success. Yeah. Yeah. And just a follow-up question on that too. That's great. Is just like, you know, you guys have had so much, so many hours, you know, I've coached so many clients, um, you know, have you guys have so many reps and sets for your guys' own, like, you know, fitness and health journeys, but how do you kind of sell that to somebody that comes in with that mentality of like, I just want X, like, how do you guys do that with the fitness project? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I would say that when it comes to marketing at some capacity, our marketing is aiming upward. So our customers come in wanting to look a certain way. And we, we applaud that, right? We're former bodybuilders. I've run an ultra marathon. Lindsay's run a marathon. Like, so we are achievers in the fitness space. And the difference is the reason why we do those things is not just for the trophy. It's for the quality of life, mm -hmm. right? Like running an ultra marathon was about how learning how to endure and go through pain and like, yeah. learn those lessons about myself. And on the other side of the equation, doing deep work in mindfulness and meditation was just as important as the run. Because that's one thing that Lindsay and I both have a history in is, is meditation, mindfulness, and really understanding ourselves. I say that because we're out achieving and our marketing is about the achievement, but it's really about the connection. So our customers want two things. Our clients really want two things. They want to grow and they want to have someone who's they're able to connect with through that growth. So they see, hey, like I'm a business owner, or I'm an executive, and I want to make the next target become more realistic or more possible, right? I want to strive. And they recognize that the first constraint or the biggest constraint is how they're taking care of themselves. Mm -hmm. So that's really what you have to figure out is what's the thing that your fitness is actually keeping you from experiencing or doing? What's the the thing that you can't do that you really want to do? 
Mm-hmm. Is that being more active with your kids? Is that being having more years with your kids? Is that making more money? Is that feeling like you can show up on camera and speak to your audience, but because you're not self-conscious, you can do it in a, in a really charismatic way, or is it being able to take your shirt off at the beach and, and have other people admire you because of the way you look? Is it that connection with your wife or your spouse? There's always a different connection and that's where we take people and I think that's why I say like we're aiming up. It's like, yeah, we, we want people to see that it's great to look a certain way. And, and obviously from a fitness standpoint, you want to feel a certain way. You want to have the capability in your body, but what is it linked to? Yeah. And if we can figure out what it's linked to, then the longevity of that habit is going to stick because there's always a deeper purpose other than just the first one that we typically come to in our mind. Yeah, that's really good, man. And I I really like what you said, Brian, about like these, these clients, right? It's like, they they have to really like stop and think like, who am I becoming during this process? And a lot of people just don't think that they don't stop and think about it. But it's the same thing we tell like coaches when they're building their their coaching businesses, where it's like, you're tapping into entrepreneurism, where it's going to test you so much, but you're going to grow so much and, and learn so many different things about yourself that you probably would have never discovered until you actually walk down this path. Same thing with fitness. So it's like, I really, really like how you said that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, when it comes to how to <coughs> sell it, I think that the biggest thing is giving people space to think, mm-hmm. like building some self-awareness throughout the process of that, that conversation about them taking the next step. Because if you just try to, if you just meet people at face value and you're like, oh yeah, you want to lose 30 pounds? I can help you lose 30 pounds. If you meet them at that surface level, that's where it shall stay. So it's, it's kind of a, it's a process of having patience and letting somebody think and letting, guiding somebody to process. Why do you care about this? You don't know. All right. I can't give that to you. Take some space to think about that. Mm -hmm. Right. It's, and if somebody doesn't have a deeper purpose in my, in our experience or my experience, then I'm not going to push them to do it because it's, I know it's not going to last for them. And that's just, that's just not it's not an integrity for me to be like, all right, cool, let's do it. It's, Hey, if there's no greater purpose to this, then I'm not your person. And I hope that you find that person, but I can refer you to to five great trainers. (laughs) Yeah. So I part of that. And I was going to say, that's where your guys is like marketing, your messaging, the culture, you guys are kind of like cultivating for people to understand that, to have a deeper meaning than just the surface level stuff, right? The outcomes of the X or Y or whatever, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, Okay. Makes sense. Well, and, and the build off that from a business standpoint, it's knowing what people think they need. Yeah, exactly. Right? So yep. like our, our advertisements, I mean, Lindsay and I are in incredible shape. Like I wouldn't, I can talk about all these things because I live it. <laughs> so it's, it's not mm-hmm. like I'm just posting on Instagram to hope that someone thinks I'm successful. It's like, no, like we are, we've dialed ourselves in over the last 10 years. Mm-hmm. And this has been such a foundational point of growth that without fitness in our life, we wouldn't be wealthy. We wouldn't be in a relationship anymore because we would have sabotaged ourselves. And we certainly wouldn't have the relationships that we have outside of ourselves. Mm -hmm. It's like, that's been such a core piece. And I think that what you're seeing in our society is that that core piece is lacking for so many people. And they also see it, right? They see like, you know, like one of our ads that we're running right now is a picture of Lindsay and I running on the beach. And that like, and we're, we're seeing a lot of male engagement with that picture because I'm a fit guy and I'm running with a beautiful woman, right? I'm blessed. (laughs) And so (laughs) that, but that meets them in, in where they're at. And it's like, yeah, well, we, we don't want you to just come here and, and, and experience like a mental breakthrough. We want you to get a physical change and then start to see that it does permeate to everything else. Yeah. Like I told someone yesterday, it's like, he's like, oh, I have this business and, you know, we just raised know, $500,000 and we're starting to do our cap runs. And I was like, fantastic. I was like, awesome. So with working with us to dial in this area of your life, I want to hear that you 10 X your business. Like, I want to hear that you were a better father. I want to hear those things. And and once you start to kind of get in the groove of that, every individual is different. Right. But for us, it's knowing that they, they, they value growth and they value their family. Yeah. And if those two things are integrity, it's like, then it makes it easier to build the habit. You might not get to shredded, you know, 6% body fat and have abs and that's perfectly fine, but you will be able to build the consistent habits because there's a clear and obvious benefit beyond just the, Oh, and I'm fit benefit. 
I don't know. If yeah. That makes- oh, hundred yeah. percent does, yeah. man. This is, this is just such powerful stuff for just like those getting into like, you know, fitness coaching and want to build a business. And this is the reason why you guys are seeing all the success. So really quick, where can more people just find more information about you guys? Yeah. So our Facebook is definitely off the chain. That's where we <laughs> could find the most information about us. I say that because in as funny as it is, we have worked so hard to try to build uh, systems that help us put out great content. And it was a really big pain point for a long time because we just like couldn't find our groove because we were trying to do it all ourselves. We have an amazing editor who's helped us. But now we have a really great Facebook page at The Fitness Project Co., mm-hmm. so The Fitness Project Company. And then our website is being rebuilt right now. So that's why okay. that's secondary. But it's thefitnessproject.us, not .com. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah. Cool. We'll, we'll have that linked up, but guys, I want to, I want to uh, just pivot on this too. I, I'm interested to know, I'm interested to know. Um, and I think a lot of people would be too, is like how you guys met, how, how this relationship formed. And and most importantly, like what, how you, what made you guys go into business? Like, no, it was the right time to do it. The right person, because there's probably a lot of people in relationships that are like, Hey, should, should I go into business with my, my partner? Like, what does yeah. that look like? So I really want to hear kind of like how you guys met in that, that when was that time you guys just took the leap to just do a, a BB uh, biz, uh, business partners? Yeah, there was the original coming together story, but then the business transition, two very different points in our life, right? Because we met when we were 12. So we go wow. we we go way, way back. And he, he played baseball as a kid. My brother play, played baseball as a kid. So I always knew of him. And um, we met at a little pizza joint where my bit, my little band was playing and Brian showed up and I was like, wow, Brian Pickwitz is here. And we met then, <laughs> but we didn't start dating until we were in college. So we could, we could go on that, that story. But I think that what's really interesting is how we went from dating to the point where we got in business together, because that's something I never, ever in a million years would have predicted. Mm-hmm. Because when we started dating, I was in, we were both in school, but I was studying engineering and Brian was studying, was your major politics? Yeah, I I studied politics in school and then I ended up getting a degree in business with a minor in politics because it seemed more applicable to the journey I was on. But most of my time was spent in uh, the political science field. Right. So we're in these two fields, trending on uh, both, both focused on our growth and our development. We wanted great careers and Brian started building his business over here. And I just kind of watched from afar. I was like, wow, that's so cool what you're doing. And I was working on my own physical transformation and losing weight. I had a weight loss journey of my own that took about eight months or so. And then I started competing and I was doing all of that while I was in school. So again, it was more just me focusing on my own journey, watching Brian have his business journey I started and competing around that time. And so, Brian started competing around that time. Mm-hmm. When we started dating, I had lost 65 pounds in like eight months, seven months. Jeez. Oh. And I won, I won my first bodybuilding competition while I was in school. I launched my first personal training business. And Lindsay and I had kind of been talking, kind of been friends. And uh, I just gotten out of a long relationship. And I was kind of like, hey, you know do I want to date this person? Do I just want to stay friends? Like, what does this look like? And uh, I remember us starting to hang out and she was the first person to actually let me be myself fully. Like I didn't have to like quiet my ambitions. I didn't have to uh, temper my, uh, we'll say my jokes, right? I could just be myself (laughs) fully. And that was a good sign. And then she started wanting to train with me. And I told her, I'm like, Hey, I'm four weeks out from a contest. So I'll let you train with me once, but if you break my concentration, I'm, I love you, but you're, you, I didn't tell her I loved her at that point. I wasn't oh, weird. That's true. I was like, but, <laughs> but I was like, Hey, if, if whatever reason you break my concentration, you're going to have to train on your own. And it's like, so she like was, and then that session, I got hundred pound dumbbell press for the first time. Cause she like, was like, let's go. And it's like pushing. Them up. <laughs> so I think that we, we really meshed uh, well with each other's ambition. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, I started building my business and Lindsay started her weight loss journey. And then it just kind of started to snowball. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah. I, it, I want to talk about your contest. Yeah. It kind of, <laughs> it started to snowball because we, again, I had, I had started competing. I was still in school. I had started sharing on social media, my journey, and I shared and documented this whole process from going through college, prepping for my first big show, my first NPC show, which was the Boston show. 
It was the biggest one in New England, like 100, 130 bikini competitors. And that was what I was slating myself for. And I was like, I want to win. So I documented the whole journey. Again, at this time, I don't think I was coaching anybody or doing anything really. I might have been training friends, but that was it. And I ended up winning the show. So it was like this big crescendo marketing moment unintentionally. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I was Brian had pushed me. He was like, you should start. You should just build your company, like build a company, like open, open your own things, take your own clients. And so I built a little Facebook page with his help. And he had already been trading people online and trading people in person. So I kind of had some structure. But once I launched, I like immediately had a full roster and was like, oh, because I had just documented this whole thing and right. shared this whole story and wasn't asking for anything in return. So the moment I was like, I'm taking clients, it blew up like pretty quickly. So that was a really cool experience. And we then documented the move to Los Angeles from small town, New Hampshire. Like we mm -hmm. just wanted to take people with us on a journey and we were also coaching. So if anybody needed help with their fitness, they came to us. Yeah. And it just started to, I mean, there was a lots of, it, it'd be nice to say that it was like, Oh, we moved to Los Angeles and things are perfect. And we blew up. That didn't happen. We moved to Los Angeles. I was <laughs> in professional bodybuilding. Lindsay was pursuing professional bodybuilding. And I just looked at the trajectory for being a professional bodybuilder. And I said, this isn't for me. Yeah. Um, what's required, what it does to your health. And I also was recognizing that I was coaching mostly, you know, let's say 40 year old women and helping them with their mindset and their relationship with food in these different areas. And I said, oh, there's something else here. I was blessed also that I had a <laughs> mentor in my life who was a client who had sold his company for about $50 million. He was a really successful business owner. And he had started work with me and saw a lot of great success. And so Lindsay and I moved to Los Angeles and there's like, you know, we start working with some business owners. We start working with people and who are really doing well. And we start to kind of craft this business and this, this two singular brands separate, because yeah. we had two separate coaching styles and, and kind of, I would market more one way. She would market more one way. And so we were just kind of moving in that way, but all things considered, we were very successful uh, after that first year in LA it took a little bit to get used to it. But once we had our feet underneath us, it started to work really well. We learned about business. We joined masterminds. We were mm -hmm. in the, the the energy that was Gold's Gym Venice. So it was a really successful experience. And then one time that like after that first year, we were back in New Hampshire staying at one of our clients uh, like rental properties for a couple of weeks and his brother showed up and his brother is really nice guy. He's like, hi, my name's XYZ. And his name's Scott, actually. It's not XYZ. But like, <laughs> I, I'm mindful of the relationship because of the story. Uh, but nonetheless, I'll, I'll, I'll share it here. And and I knew that it was uh, my client's brother. I had heard stories about him. He was a really successful entrepreneur in Dallas. He had this big company. And over He started it from scratch and they had over 3,500 employees. And he's like, hey, come over to my house. Like It's just down the street. Come over. I'd love to talk to you. And so we're talking, we're talking, we're talking. And he hands me... And Lindsay Jesse Itzler's book about having David Goggins with him. Mm -hmm. uh, live with him. It's called Living with the Seal. And he's like, you know what? I've been thinking of having someone do that. Mm -hmm. And I just looked at him. I said, that's weird because I could totally do that. And he kind of laughed a little bit. He chuckled. And then uh, I think like a couple days later, Lindsay and I actually got engaged. And he showed up at that house that night. We were having like a cookout with my mom and, my, and her parents and, and stuff. And he's like, you know, as everyone was talking, he was just showing a friend the house. He's like, you know, I've really been thinking about having someone come live with us. And, and the seeds were planted. Mm -hmm. This is the opportunity. So I told Lindsay, like, we need to write up a deal, like write up a program, build an offer yeah. for this person that's going to be really concrete of how many sessions they're going to get. What are we going to do? X, Y, Z. And we sent it to him. And he said, that sounds great. Let's plan the date. And he had us come and live with him and his family for a month. And we got to see what it really is like for someone at the top. Not just like how successful they are, but what are their real struggles? What are their real challenges? What are the things that are weighing on them every day? I think that the interesting thing for me is, yeah, I grew up without a lot of money. Uh, my dad got sick when I was really young and I've seen what poverty really looks like. And now we're in a, really good space for ourselves. So we're kind of in that middle yeah. echelon, but also being able to see what true, true wealth was, was really fascinating because 
it changed my lens on what someone like that actually goes through. Like I can't, we can't comprehend the amount of stress that comes with having to make sure that 3,500 people in their whole family eats well, yeah. you, the, the amount of stress and tension that came with that. And he did such a great job of managing it, but I became his one-on-one -on -one coach. And then Lindsay worked with his wife. We worked with their family, we kind of integrated into their family. And then he brought us back for another month. We moved down to Dallas and through a few more of those experiences along the lines of that, we realized that, Hey, we're probably not going to work really well if we keep doing these two things. Mm -hmm. And I'm really talented in this way. You're really talented this way. How about we just build a business together and we'll, we'll actually grow, grow something. And what's funny enough is the only real reason why we did start the business is because we needed a third party to cast the check. When, yeah. when he sent it to us, right? So <laughs> they're like, oh, who, who is he sending it to? He's sending right. Ryan. Yeah. Sending the yeah. Oh, yeah. well, let's let's build a company off of this. And, and we'll call it the Fitness Project, which was like an eight-week program we built for fun and did a giveaway on like a year before that. So we were like, oh, well, we like, we made, built this thing called the Fitness Project. So like, yeah. let's just put that name on the LLC and go to the bank and like sign some papers so that we have an account that he can send the check to that looks more professional. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> yeah. And so it wasn't until it wasn't until a year, a year plus later. Yeah. The end of 2019, because that whole experience was in 2018. At the end of 2019 wasn't was when we actually came together and said, let's build what we call the fitness project into an actual entity. Yeah. And and have another coach and like actually build something, a pilot pilot program. But yeah, for that first year, it was literally just a bank account. I know, I know, I know what you're thinking. You're probably like, dude, come on. I was literally watching this video, watching this interview, and you literally just pop up on the screen and interrupt it. Trust me, there's a good reason for this. Just hold on, and I'm gonna I'm gonna let you get back to that interview or that video. Trust me, all right? So the reason why I stopped you on this is because we're giving away our book a hundred percent free. Okay, so if you're a frustrated fitness professional, you're not growing fast enough, you're looking to future-proof and recession-proof your business by adding online training, or if you're doing online training, you want to scale and go and grow faster, all you have to do is check out our new book. We're giving the audio away, we're giving the PDF um, away, so all you have to do is click the link below in the description box and get your free copy, all right? So now, back to the video. That's awesome. Yeah, I think that's so cool. <laughs> like, that's a really awesome story that you guys did that, you know? I mean, would you guys, like, just looking back at it now and just aspiring coaches maybe listening to this, would you recommend that? Like, going and doing something like that to where you're living with somebody like that and being with them for the full month? If you want to, if it feels like you're the kind of person who can do that. I think yeah. that if the opportunity presents itself, you'd be a fool not to. Right. But you have to figure out who is that kind of customer? What are they going to actually be purchasing? I think that my hesitation would be a lot of people would hear that and they'd try to offer that to someone. Mm -hmm. There's a certain kind of person that has the need for that. Now you can offer, my advice would be you can offer a high tailored, high touch program where you go in and you do their nutrition and their training, but you don't live with them or, Hey, mm -hmm. I'm going to come and cook for your family. But, Again, that has to be a certain kind of customer, mm -hmm. right? That's a certain kind of customer. They most likely have a family. They most likely have kids. It, there's a certain criteria that you want to be aiming at. Mm -hmm. But you also have to see, a part of you has to say, I can do this. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. We had no idea how to do it. Right. Yeah. right. I mean, I've never lived with someone like that. I've never yeah. lived with anyone. Yeah. yeah. My parents, I mm -hmm. with a couple people, but <laughs> it wasn't that level and i was so nervous on the flight flight over not even imposter syndrome but this guy can literally hire anyone in the world and he's bringing me on so yeah, that's cool I, I need to like and he's expecting david goggins <laughs> that's at least what i thought in my mind so the first Hi, time bye. we start we, we get there we do our workout or whatever i was like all right later tonight we're gonna do cardio again and he's like, do you usually do this? I was like, no, I don't. I would never think to do two sessions in a day with someone like this, but this is what I think that you want. Yeah. And uh, it was it, the, the most beautiful thing is I said this to one of our coaches and he was like talking to one of my best friends who's now one of his clients, who's a really great, he's a uh, sales VP, owns part of a company. He's a really successful guy and he's working with our assistant coach. And I was listening to them talk the other day 
we were in an event together and my coach Steven goes, Nate says something along the lines of, Oh, Steven, I'm going to show you how to handle sales. And Steven goes, Oh, I'm supposed to be the one who's coaching you. And I looked at Steven and I said, Steven, I'm going to tell you something that's going to make you really successful. Your job is to help someone who is really successful, get healthy and in shape. And in turn, that person is going to show you how to be successful like that. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really important for that person who's like, Oh, well, should I do something like that? If you have that kind of customer and that's your base, you absolutely should, but you could most likely find an offer that serves your specific customer in a similar way. Right. Like how, how can you make, I don't know, like, could you be a fitness coaching company that also offers daycare, right? Can you yeah. build a gym around a specific niche <laughs> in that way that allows your customer to feel like all their needs are met? I think if you know your customer, you'll find an offer and yeah. that's more important than thinking, should I go do something big like that? Because there's so many ways to serve your customers. Yeah. Who's your yeah, customer? Absolutely. Who's your customer? And what are all of the things that they're buying that they're not buying from you related to fitness and wellness? And how many of those needs can you service within your offer is a really great way to look at it and a great thought experiment too. Because if it is like, hey, they really need somebody in person and you live by them, then by all means, build that offer. That would be a very high touch, high touch, high ticket offer. Yeah. But asking that thought or doing that thought experiment would be really helpful. And the last thing I'll add is it's really important that when you're thinking of your clients, that you're not just thinking, who can I charge the most money to? Mm -hmm. um, or how can I get this person to spend more money, give me more money? You can ask them, like, how can I build a product and charge what I, what I think it's worth? But I feel like a lot of people just want to build something that gets them paid rather than getting a really valuable product in the hands of the right client. And that's a recipe for disaster, right? Yeah. Cause if you're just doing it, thinking you're going to make a lot of money, very out of integrity, you're out of integrity and that person might pay you once, but that's not how you build longevity. That's not exactly how you keep clients for life. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's really important that your, your heart's in the right place, knowing that if you do the right thing and you charge your worth, you'll make a lot of money. But if it's the other way around, I think you'll end up broken. You won't like the process. Yeah. I agree with you guys on that now. And thanks for, uh, thanks for sharing that whole story and everything guys. It's really, really awesome. So let's go, let's shift over. I want to talk more about like mindset and lifestyle. So you guys are, I know you guys are probably big on just like, you know, routines, rituals, really just, you know, playing offense, not defense. So what are some really just golden rituals that you guys stand by to, again, prime yourself yeah. to play offense and not defense every single day? Yeah. I'm really glad you said that. I need to post about that today. It's a good, that's a good little note because <laughs> I, I, I do talk about that all the time with not just our clients, but a, mostly our coaches actually, mm -hmm. uh, because a lot of times they will focus on just feeling relatively calm going into their calls. But I'm like, how can you, how can you play to your point, play offense? How can you set yourself up to be as strong and powerful as you possibly can today? That's your ritual, right? So the ones that I find the most useful, there has to be one for your mind and one for your body. Anything beyond that, once you start getting tedious with it, or it starts to feel like it's this, this big task or this monster every morning or every evening, that's when you've reached, uh, that's when you've re overstretched yourself or you've gone too far in my opinion. Um, and I have done that as well, like morning routine with 10 different rituals in it. Right. Like, oh my, oh my goodness. That's so not sustainable. <laughs> and does it even get you the result you're after? Mm -hmm. So it's when it comes down to tactically speaking, a, a routine or a habit for your mind and one for your body, each being less than 10 minutes is the, the structure of success in my opinion. But the more important as far as activities go is what's the result that you're focusing on that determines those two rituals that you pick or habits that you pick. If your aim is to feel peace when you start your day, because usually you wake up feeling anxious or you have kids and they're running around screaming or whatever, and that causes a lot of stress, then your rituals and your routines maybe should should give you some sense of peace before you start your day. Mm-hmm. Whereas if you want to, if you wake up feeling really heavy and sluggish a lot of the time, then most likely your habits that you pick need to spike your energy. They need to skyrocket your focus or your mental clarity. Maybe that's a cold shower. It's a run or a full workout instead of 
a quick walk, right? So I'd be happy to share my specific habits that I've come to. Yeah, they, cha- they absolutely. change. Um, but that's kind of the structure. So for me, what I've simplified it down to is three minutes of breath work, which is literally set a timer, breathe for three minutes. If I feel good, do three more or 10 more or whatever I need, but three. And that is like my keystone habit for my mental clarity. If I don't do that, I tend to be more prone to overwhelm or prone to disorganization. Doesn't mean that my day is chaos if I don't do it, but I just feel that difference between having three minutes to think and breathe and clarify my aim for the day. So that's like my keystone habit for my mental performance. And then I just make sure I walk for 10 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. As long as I get blood flow, like I'm actually physically alert, which is important just for, again, mental clarity. I need to have some blood flow and go for a walk to be able to wake my body and my brain up. So those are my, those are really my two. Anything else is bonus for me. What about about, about you, Brian? Good. No, I thought that was a great answer. And I, I think that you keyed in on something really important, understanding what you need in this season. And those should be the habits yeah. that you're building. Yep. I have gone through different seasons where it's like, I'm 4 a.m. I'm crushing a workout. I'm going for a run. Like this is something that I'm doing. And I've gone through seasons where it's a lot of breath work. And I, I got really into Wim Hof breathing for about a year and a half. It's very meticulous with those habits for a long time. And now I am in a season where I don't really care that much. I just want to get things going. So I wake up, I take a cold shower, or if it's cold in Dallas, we have a pool. So if it once it gets down to like 40 degrees, I just run out and leap in the pool. It's one of my favorite things. It's a true <laughs> adrenaline rush. And then after that, I go and take a you know 15 minute walk around the, the block. And one of the things I try, I've really worked to do is during that time where I'm walking, I'm I'm channeling my focus to to what I'm doing that day. And I think that's really valuable. I try not to put too much in my mind, other other information like podcasts. I think it, yeah. there's seasons where podcasts are really valuable. So that's not what I'm saying. But when I'm going for that walk, you're I'm not really, scrolling. I'm really trying to focus my attention on what are what are my intentions today, or what am I really grateful for, and not just thinking about it, but really feeling it and emotionalizing the experience, so that when I go and sit down for work, I'm in a good zone. So I think that those two habits for me have been really concrete. And I think that self-awareness allows you to say, hey, okay, what do I really need? Or Mm -hmm. what's my, what's my 80, 20, right? So if you're in a season Mm -hmm. where you're really struggling to get out of bed and go and work out, or just say working out in general, then the first thing I would do is I would work out in the morning, right? It's, it's done. You don't have to think about it anymore. For me, I'm, I'm not in that season. I've run ultra marathons. I've, compete in bodybuilding. I train three or four days a week at night. So I wake up and I work because that's what I'm doing. So I think you just have to kind of figure out those habits that allow you to be more effective in reaching the results that matter in this season Mm -hmm. and then devote yourself to that. Yeah. Yeah. And I think just to piggyback on this, like what would be good for some of the listeners is too, like, you know, now that you guys are kind of like in that offense mode to play, like for the day, like what are some like, maybe like, you know, systems or habits that you guys have like, kind of like realized or picked up or developed that's really made you guys kind of like, you know, play at that level that you guys are at with the high performance level and running a multiple six figure business. Yeah. The biggest one I was thinking about this today, cause I was like, oh my God, I would not be able to function without this habit, let alone function at a high level, genuinely time management. Yes. And I know it's more of a skill than a habit, but in order to build a skill, you have to practice, you have to practice it, right? Because we all have the same 24 hours in a day. We all are awake mostly for the same 16 to 18, ideally if you're sleeping enough, but there's so many, like countless, countless ways that you can manage that 16 hours. There's so it's literally infinite number of things that you could quote unquote do. Right. So to, so to think that you can manage your life with a 20 point checklist every single day of things that you must do and hope that you get great results. It's just, it's, it's a good first step. I'll put it that way. It's a mm-hmm. good first step. Cause if you're running your life without a to-do list, you probably feel very anxious and chaotic at all times. 
But if you at least have a checklist, then you're leaning more into that like rushed overwhelm feeling rather than total chaos. And then once you take your checklist and you actually schedule it, okay, that's another step. It's another ritual, another habit. It's like, okay, let me take this checklist and actually put it on my calendar. So I'm not trying to remember when Timmy has baseball and I can actually live presently in my life. But then once you get to that point where now you've started to put everything on a calendar, yes. then mm -hmm. you have to take the next step and start practicing sitting down on Sundays, asking yourself, what is this week all about? What are we trying to get done? Especially if you have a business, then you take those results, reset the checklist, throw things away that don't matter. And you actually prioritize, which is a different skill inside of time management. Once you're prioritized, then you go and you set up your week. And then beyond that, you set up your days and then you optimize your days and you optimize your week for results. So it's constant and never ending how you can manage your time. So I think that for me, when it comes to managing the business, managing relationships, our relationship as a couple, planning a wedding, many different things on the on the yeah. list, mm -hmm. it's it's really been having that monthly zoom out of what's if I can condense it down to just a few things in each category for the whole month. And then every single week having a Sunday ritual or a Monday ritual of what's the result for the week in the business that I want. So health, wealth, and relationships. Yep. Business, business is wealth, right? So what's the wealth focus? What's the health focus? What's the relationship focus? And then building out my time daily that's really, I mean, that's a really big way to say it, but hopefully somebody can find where they're at in that scale that I just described or that staircase. Yeah. But that's, that's, I think ab above all else, that is what has been like the skill, the habit, the ritual, the tactic that has, that allows me to, to live well and perform well. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's really, really good. good. Yeah. Yeah. And I would say Lindsay, it really, is, you put something really great there, which is understanding that it starts with knowing where you're at building the small habits. I mean, we've been doing this for almost 10 years. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, like quite frankly, we've been, Good point. Work, you know, so yeah. you, the first time I ever had a business, I never kept a calendar and mm -hmm. I would run around and I, I took, I was pride like, you're in, crazy. I took, I took pride in not doing that. And then it, cost <laughs> me, and then it, and then it cost me money and then, okay, that's not a good thing. I need to stop doing that. So I started trying to build a calendar. Yeah. And then I started to figure out how to make a calendar work. And I know that for a lot of people, their time management skills are, oh, I just like to go by the seat of my pants because I don't want I don't want to have structure that tells me when I'm failing. But that's not a very uh, astute way to do it. So I love that you know you talk about the way that things have built up. I would say this: the first thing that I I would say the most impactful thing as far as systems go is accounting. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, yeah. I, I think that I think that True. people don't there's there's two mindsets. People have scarce mindsets or abundant mindsets. I think that you get in this habit of being scarce and then you start working your way to abundance, at least in my life. And I, I was like, hey, I'm gonna start being abundant. So I started investing money in myself. And what was great is that I didn't have uh I didn't have horrible financial habits. So I at least was saving some money. But what was happening is I was investing money in myself. And as a result of those investments, at first, they started to really pay off. And then due to lack of knowledge on what to truly do, those investments stopped paying off. And so in my mind, I had associated like, oh, if I spend 10 grand on a program, I automatically make 10 grand back, which wasn't true because that, that, that specific program I was doing at the time was not the right thing for me. Right. right. So not having financial discipline, not having a profit and loss, not tracking cash. It just led to so much pain. Yeah. And now I am, I've, I, I would say my biggest asset is my ability to understand what's happening inside the business. Because if you agree. understand what's happening inside your business, if you understand your profit and loss, you want, and not just saying QuickBooks, set up QuickBooks. It's not what I'm saying. How many months does your money get you? Right. How many months? So this is a really good point for anyone who's listening. How many months does your money get you? If you look at your expense reports and see, oh, we spend five grand a month or ten grand a month. Okay, if I'm sitting at five thousand dollars, that's not a really good sign. That means I, if I'm spending five thousand dollars, I have five thousand dollars cash. I got one month of my money, right? 
So I need to be able to look at and say, how does, how do I build a plan for my money in a way that allows me to know where I'm going and make strategic investments? Mm -hmm. Because those strategic investments are so important. You should always be spending money on yourself as long as you know where you're going. And I think that so many coaches in the space don't have that business mindset. And so they start getting yeah. into the abundant mindset, which is fantastic. It's you're, you always make money back that you invest in yourself. Uh, if, if not because of the investment, it will be the lessons on how yeah. to invest in yourself. Yeah. <laughs> but nonetheless, when you're building a company, you need to know what, what, or even a practice, right? Small practice. You need to know what are your spending habits? How are you thinking long-term? Um, how are you structuring your business in a way that makes it so that you do know where you should pull back, right? What are the difference between your variable and fixed expenses? These are things that a lot of online people don't talk about because this is actual business, right? Um, it's great to sell. You should always be selling, but you should also have a foundation. And I learned that from our client that we lived with. He's like, the yeah. first thing I do for every single person throughout the company is I say, look at your profit and loss. Yeah. That's the first thing. And our systems tell me when they don't. And if they don't, they get a call from me. I'm the owner. I'm the president. If you're going to call from the president of the company and you're running a small branch, that's a problem, right? So it's ingrained, right? It's If you want to be a part of this company, that's the first thing is know your profit and loss. doesn't mean you can't spend money, but you need to know how much money you're spending so that you have that ingrained into your your business and your life. And I think it, to to put one that's really down, good one. that would be what mm -hmm. I would say. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, go ahead. I was like, Lindsay, you're gonna have to throw some water on him. He's on fire. <laughs> yeah. that, that's that was, such a, man. such a valuable like lesson, man. And like just knowing your numbers and we learned this the hard way too early on. So it just, it is painful, like you said, but yeah, you just, you have to know that. And that is a big skill. It's a, it's, it's awareness, everything. So I appreciate you touching on that. So I, yeah, I'll absolutely. Add, Go ahead. I'm just gonna add this really quick as an aside, anyone who's listening, who's that resonated with read the psychology of money. Yes. That's a great a book. Movie. Yeah. It's such a good uh, book. Yeah. Yeah. So that'd be the, where I would start is the psychology of money and then yeah. money, money master the game by Tony Robbins are the two best money books as yeah. far as understanding it and how to think about it that you can start with. Yeah. I even like that other one too. Uh, you are a badass at making money by, I think her name is Jen Sincero or something. Yeah. That's really yeah. good. That's yeah. a good one too. Yeah. That's a great one. Mindset wise. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, guys, well, we're coming towards the end of this uh, this discussion, this conversation. And honestly, this has been great. A wealth of knowledge, a lot of nuggets. I appreciate you guys just sharing your guys' story, your wisdom, all that. So before I ask the last question, I just want to take a moment to acknowledge you guys and just say thank you. You know, Thank you for your guys' time. Um, I really respect people's time because that's one thing you just can't get back. So again, thank you guys for carving out an hour and spending time with us, dishing out all this great stuff. And again, Brian, thank you for coming on and serving our students. It was game changing. They're, they're still raving about that. And again, just for all the, the impact and work you guys are doing with all these people's lives and just changing their fitness, their mindset, everything. So thank you guys for that. And congrats oh, on you. you guys getting married as well too. Yes. Thank yeah. you. I appreciate it. <laughs> thank you. It's coming, coming in hot. Coming oh in yeah. Hot. Yeah. Enjoy it. <laughs> Thank you. So, so my last question is what is your guys' definition of living a dynamic lifestyle? A dynamic lifestyle. Mm -hmm. It's a fun one. Do you want to go first? You want me to Rochambeau? Well, I, I, I like to you know, give it back to you because I think they had the microphone a little long in that last one. Um, <laughs> That's fair. But what, what I'll say is living a dynamic lifestyle is making sure that the right boxes are full. So that's what I would say is making sure that you are, are continuing to stretch yourself in the areas where you need to grow, continuing to take care of the areas that you know that are essential and constantly being a learning machine. Mm -hmm. You know, yep. as soon as you stop learning, you're dead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. I thought Love that this, I thought that this morning because I was feeling very um ungrateful today this morning. And I was like, "Oh, it's cuz I stopped learning this week. I need to just dig back into learning something <laughs> new." And it it lit instant cure. I was like, "Oh, yes, life is fun." <laughs> <So> <laughs> perspective is found in learning. What came to me first other than variety cuz dynamic is up and down, there's variety mm -hmm. to it. Uh the first precursor of having a dynamic lifestyle is discipline. Yeah. 
without without discipline a dynamic lifestyle is a sexy way of saying chaotic lifestyle Mm. an inconsistent lifestyle so i would say with a foundation of discipline living a dynamic lifestyle is having variety on top of your disciplines and for me if i think of the disciplines that i hold if i only follow my disciplines i.e i eat well i work out i check in on my laptop make sure our coaches are doing well and I follow my disciplines, my life feels very flat, opposite of dynamic. If I look at my life, I maintain my disciplines and I say, ah, where can I, where can I push myself? Where can I stretch myself? Who can I connect with? Adding, looking for variety, looking for joy in places I wouldn't normally look, looking for lessons in places that I might have to step out of my comfort zone to, to reach. That's what allows me to feel like I'm living a dynamic lifestyle in the most positive and fulfilling sense. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now so we good. have to pour some some water on your mic now. <laughs> <laughs> I love that question. Good. Way to end it. Awesome. I yeah. love I love that question. I'll take that one with me. Yeah. So guys, I mean, where can the listeners and viewers just again follow you guys and see all the cool stuff you guys are doing? So Lindsay and I are on Instagram. That's the best place place to connect with us individually. Mine is Brian Pickowitz, P-I-C-K-O-W-I-C-Z. And Lindsay's is Rego Bomb. Mm-hmm. And, and I, I would assume that that will be in the show notes, but it's <laughs> it's just like it sounds, R-A-Y-G-O-B-O-M-B. And from there, uh, yeah, Facebook, the website, all those different points. Honestly, really I've interested. become a fan of Facebook recently. Yeah, so I feel like I'm going to be called an old person by Gen Z, but I really <laughs> do. I put my best content out on Facebook. I feel like it's a really good, a good place to build community and connection through comments and engagements there. Yeah. Facebook's definitely a better. They've people. stepped it up. Yeah. Yeah. I got to give you guys a virtual fist bump. Cause I like Facebook more. Eric likes Instagram. Hey, it's all, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> no judgment. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys. All right, guys. Well, thank hey, guys. you guys so much. And then, uh, yeah, to all the listeners, go check out Brian and Lindsay, what they're doing. They're awesome. But yeah, We'll catch you guys on the next episode. I hope you got a lot out of that interview with Brian and Lindsay. Now, if you want to build your own six-figure business, two ways to do it. The first one is download our free book below. The second way is watch this training right here, Six New Ways for Health and Fitness Professionals to Build a Six-Figure Business, just like Brian and Lindsay did. Watch this video.